Hi, I'm Chris aka The Philosopher's Games and today we have a brief look at certain properties of the ring race that people often have, let's call it, misconceptions about or are not fully aware of for various reasons, at least from the book's perspective. As always, I try to pronounce names as Tolkien described it. Shoutouts to the artists who allowed me to use their fantastic artworks like Kimberly 80, Ted Naismith, Jenny Dolphin, Andres Bertaccini and Sara Morello. In addition, spoiler warning, I guess. Also, a small announcement. If you are one of my few German-speaking viewers, this video here will be available in German as well. Link to the channel is in the description. So basically I now have another channel where I plan over time to release some of my videos in German. Maybe some classics, some new videos, we will see. Focus will be on the main English channel though, so expect videos appearing there very slowly. This is also the reason why this video is a bit shorter. But let's continue. The Nazgul, the Ring Race, are for sure among the most popular antagonists in Tolkien's universe. Peter Jackson's portrayal of them in his Lord of the Rings films definitely helped in this regard. However, he might also have established some ideas about them that are not reflected by the books, though they might make sense for a film adaption and in the context of only having access to what is written in the Lord of the Rings due to the rights situation. I also assume in some cases, the root lies in the fact that things can be quite complicated in Tolkien's books. Let's start with one idea from the Hobbit films. The Nazgul are dead and were buried once. In the second Hobbit film, which was a bit questionable from a book reader's perspective, Gandalf and Radagast explore an ancient and dark grave to check if the Nazgul, especially the Witch King, are still buried there. But the graves were empty and their bars opened bent from the inside to the outside. While I like the scene visually, the idea behind it is completely made up. There is no mention of graves for the Nazgul and there is a reason for that. The ring race never died directly. They were, you could say, transformed into the state. Quote from the Silmarillion, that is background story of Tolkien's world, the book. Those who used the nine rings became mighty in their day, kings, sorcerers and warriors of old. They obtained glory and great wealth, yet it turned to their undoing. They had, as it seemed, unending life, yet life became unendurable to them. They could walk, if they would, unseen by all eyes in this world beneath the sun. And they could see things in worlds invisible to mortal men, but too often they beheld only the phantoms and delusions of Sauron. And one by one, sooner or later, according to their native strength and to the good or evil of their wills in the beginning, they fell under the thraldom of the ring that they bore and under the domination of the one which was Sauron's. And they became forever invisible, save to him that wore the ruling ring, and they entered into the realm of shadows. The Nazgul were they, the ring race, the enemy's most terrible servants. Darkness went with them and they cried with the voices of death. So these nine men got nine rings of power from the Dark Lord Sauron and it did not kill them but gave them unending life instead, though over time they became invisible like ghosts or phantoms and life became unendurable for them. And then they fell under Sauron's will and became the Nazgul, his servants. The exact nature of the ring race is very mysterious, but they definitely had no graves and were also never completely defeated before the destruction of the One Ring or imprisoned somewhere. The quote also implies that below their cloaks they were simply invisible to the eyes of mortal men. To be precise, they were moved to the so-called unseen aspect of the world, also one time called race world in the Lord of the Rings. There is a seen aspect, so the physical world, and an unseen aspect in Tolkien's universe. That is also, for example, the effect the One Ring has on Bilbo or Frodo. They are moved to the unseen and can see it as well. Gandalf confirms this in The Lord of the Rings. 
The black robes are real robes that they wear to give shape to their nothingness when they have dealings with the living. And in the Unfinished Tales we can read it more explicitly. Moreover their chief weapon was terror. This was actually greater when they were unclad and invisible and it was greater also when they were gathered together. In The Lord of the Rings we also have an actual scene that confirms this. Quote, the black rider flung back his hood and behold, he had a kingly crown and yet upon no head visible was it set. Ted Naismith's illustration depicts this very well. In these passages from Return of the King we also have a very interesting sentence that hints at the Nazgul or at least the Witch King to be precise still having undead bodies. Quote, no other blade, not though mightier hands had wielded it, would have dealt that foe a wound so bitter, cleaving the undead flesh, breaking the spell that knit the unseen sinews to his will. This is when Merry stabs the Witch King's knee with his barrow blade. I find it fascinating that Tolkien mentions undead flesh and unseen sinews. I can only speculate but to me it seems the rings of power transferred their bodies into the unseen and their spells prolonged the lives of the wearer but technically they still had bodies but are invisible to those who can't see the unseen. In case you are interested I made a detailed video about who can see the unseen. So even though they are called rays they are only ghosts in concept. Technically they are just invisible undead men with an aura of terror. This also makes a lot of sense because from my understanding physically interacting with the seen world seems quite limited for those mortals and maybe even else who have lost their body and only their spirit remained. There are very few obscure examples for that though. In this context with them still having bodies, when the Nazgul were washed away by the flood, they simply survived it but also lost their cloaks and horses. I assume one of them did not lose his horse because the elves of Elrond later only found 8 horse corpses according to the chapter The Ring Goes South in The Lord of the Rings. As a result 8 Nazgul had to walk now and only one could ride back to Mordor. Tolkien himself suggested this in scripts and notes he wrote stored in the Marquette University libraries even that Mordor sent help to the remaining eight Nazgul is mentioned in these notes. There is another interesting hint in those published in The Lord of the Rings A Reader's Companion. For his the Witch King's horse at least would need some food and rest though he needed none. Considering the other quotes as well it seems the Nazgul still had bodies but they did not need to eat or rest which is of course different for their horses. Quite interesting. Ring race also could be slain as we know from the Witch King but I guess it was not easy and some weapons like the barrow blades were better suited to wounding them. The quote from the return of the king at least hints at this. No other blade, not though mightier hands had wielded it, would have dealt that foe a wound so bitter. This does not mean that no other blade could wound the Nazgul but there was a difference in quality. The idea of Nazgul dissolving and reassembling after getting hit as we see it in the third Hobbit film is also not what we find in the books. Getting hit with a sword was something they definitely would try to avoid else why would they wear armor. Another potential misconception is that the Nazgul were originally 9 kings of men who got the rings of power. From the Silmarillion quote I just read we learn that it was slightly different. Those who got the 9 rings became mighty in their day, kings, sorcerers and warriors of old. To become those things you have to start without having them, at least not completely. And Tolkien also lists three options for what they became. At least that is how I understand the quote. A few became kings, others sorcerers and the rest warriors. Not all were kings. Tolkien also seems to phrase it that way when he gives some tiny hints who those nine were. It is said that among those whom he, Sauron, ensnared with the nine rings, three were great lords of Numenorean race. 
great lords, not great kings. In the Unfinished Tales, chapter The Hunt for the Ring, we also find the mention of, quote, the second to the chief, Kamul, the shadow of the east, abode in Dol Guldur as Sauron's lieutenant, with one other as his messenger. In note 1 we can read that in an old version of Appendix B from the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien called the second to the chief of the Nazgul Black Easterling, but the name Kamul, or maybe pronounced Khamul, is missing in that version of the text. On the internet you find the description that he was an Easterling king and I believe that too for some time as well because I read it so many times but if you read the actual passages in the books it's nowhere mentioned. Of course when he received the ring he could have become a king but as said we don't know. This also ties a bit to all sorts of names and potential identities for the ring race that you can find online. For example, the tabletop RPG Middle-earth role-playing invented names for the Nazgul, but except for Kamul, none of them are in Tolkien's books, but the idea spread. The video game Shadow of War also has scenes showing who some of the Nazgul ones were by connecting them to existing characters from the lore, but all of them contradict the law or chronology. I also made a video once about the law references and differences of Shadow of War if you are interested. In this context you also find the idea of one or more Nazgul being female. Of course we don't know the gender of these lords of men, but there is an interesting detail regarding the use of the word kings. In the poem about the rings of power and the one ring we find the line three rings to the elven kings under the sky. One of these elven kings was Galadriel without a doubt. There is no version of these events I know of where Galadriel does not get one of the rings. And she is a female and she was in addition technically not a queen. Quote, but they, Galadriel and Kiliborn, took no title of king or queen. For they said that they were only guardians of this small but fair realm, the last eastward outpost of the elves. This quote of course means Lothlorien and for their exact role in Eregion, the realm in which they potentially lived before, it's impossible to make a statement. There are too many contradicting versions of that. However, this could be used as an argument for at least the possibility of a female ring race in theory and especially Númenor had ruling queens later in the second age. Of course, this still remains inconclusive but it's in theory possible. There might be more misconceptions about the Nazgul or other characters. If you know of some more, let me know in the comments. For sure, we could revisit the topic or make a similar video for another character, but not today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. It was a bit tough because I had to produce it two times in parallel. This was also the potential announcement I mentioned last video. I might make a little channel update video for that as well. So if you speak German, my native language, maybe check my new German law channel and press the subscribe button, maybe even the bell. Same goes for this channel and video if you haven't yet. Maybe subscribe, like, leave a comment, recommend me to other Tolkien fans and check out my other stuff. I really released a lot of lore videos in the last few weeks. Playlists are in the description. Not sure what's next, most likely the next Who is Elrond part. I think there will be a longer Thranduil and Wood Elves section in it. I also think about having another Tolkien Law Q&A stream here on YouTube soon, maybe even in May. But no promise yet. Should there be outstanding news coming up, I will definitely stream though. I know my gaming content is a bit lacking right now, didn't even get to stream on Twitch, but when numbers are not that great here on the main channel, I fully focus on fixing that by releasing content. I hope it works. I even started doing some more research on Galadriel already, but who is Elrond has to be complete first. Again, thank you for watching, also for your support and goodbye.